385. No, wait. Sorry. Number 538A. <clears throat> so, uh, there's a power in this whole thing that I haven't really succeeded in conveying quite yet. Uh, and the power is in the power of not believing. All right, so uh, I've said this before, and it, it it sounds hard to believe because I'm also talking about things like heaven, afterlife, etc., which are generally and normally matters of belief or faith. Um, but I'm saying that I'm not asking anybody to believe anything because this is all observable. And I've said before that there's a... <laughs> We're entering into a new epoch, the Neo-Swedenborgian epoch. And uh, the first epoch was A. It goes A, B, C. A stands for Amen. B stands for BS, and C stands for SEE, -E, the word C, as in observe. So I'm talking about something observable. Uh, and what I mean by the power of not believing is that by not asking anybody to believe anything, I am not infringing upon anyone's beliefs or lack thereof. Okay, so I'm, I'm observing a phenomenon in the real world and I'm trying to understand how it happens within a rational scientific worldview. And I'm not uh, dismissing a religious worldview, I'm just not part of that. I am looking at these things which are generally part of religion, like afterlife visions and looking at them mechanistically like it's a mechanism like it's physiology so that's neo Swedenborgian for you that's the power of not believing okay now that's I have four points I made notes um, I was talking about this subject the subject of near-death experiences with someone and they said well science says it's just synapses and electrical currents firing off as we die. And that's a that's pretty common held opinion. So the NDE is just something that happens in the brain when you die. And uh, people who have had an NDE will go on about how it's more real than real and they're, they're sure and all this stuff. And But um, you could just say that, well, that's all part of it. The convincing nature is is part of the experience um and i want to i have this i wrote this down because this is exactly what they said they said science says it's just synapses and electrical currents firing off as we die and uh i agree with that that's what we're saying <laughs> but the the part that people don't seem to realize is the it's part okay so let me read the sentence again Science says, this is referring to the, the near-death experience, science says it's just synapses and electrical currents firing off as we die. And yes, I'm in agreement with this entire sentence. Um, but what we're talking about here is the it's part. Science says it's just synapses and electrical currents firing off as we die. Science says it is just synapses and electrical currents firing off as we die. The it. What is this it? And this it, the near-death experience, um, can sometimes last far longer experientially, which is to say, um, what sort of object, no wait, subjectively can last a long time. And in fact, there is very little 
relationship between how long it lasts on the operating table and how long it seems to last. It sometimes can last, some people even say weeks or months. It appears to last months. This event that objectively took 90 seconds can subjectively seem to last for a lot longer. And so when you say it's just synapses firing, it can be a an afterlife experience that presumably could last up to 300 years and be more real than this whole world, than this whole life. And so, if nothing else, it, it, it warrants further <laughs> investigation. Now, the end result of all this, the, I said in a previous one that in the Swedenborgian afterlife, you can do anything you want. You can do absolutely anything you want. And so the end result of all this is uh, the idea that you, the listener, who's ever listening, should put more of whatever it is you want in your life as much as possible. What is it you want? What is it you want to do? What is it you want to think about? What is it you want to read about? What is it you want to see in the world? And to uh, treat that, which is to say your own desires, secret desires, unacted or acted upon desires, treat them like they're important. Treat what you want and what you want to see and what you want to do important, like it's important. Treat yourself and your own desires like they're important. In other words, uh, take yourself seriously. Nobody's going to take you seriously. Um, and so you have to take yourself seriously. And for me specifically, like, why do I get up and play guitar and sing? Well, because that's what I want to see in the world. I want to start the day singing. That's what I want. And, uh, you know, anyway, I'm going to end this now and I'm going to do a 538B. I'm going to talk about J. Hewitt McKenzie's afterlife. Okay, thanks. See ya.